Now moving on to Cointly from the month of November. Moana Lao Volcano. Now Moana Lao means long mountain in Hawaiian. It is the largest active volcano in the world. It covers 5,271 square kilometers and is one of a chain of five volcanoes which form Hawaii's big island. Now it is the southernmost island in the Hawaiian archipelago. Now Moana Lao's summit is 4,170 meters above the sea level, but its base is on the sea floor. Now the total height would be 30,085 feet, which is equivalent to 9,170 meters, making it taller than Mount Everest. Now Moana Lao has erupted after a period of almost 40 years. It does not produce explosive eruptions. Instead, the lava flows at fairly slow pace during the volcano side. Now this would be the map of Hawaii, and uh, there is Kau Forest Reserve. There is Kilau Volcano also. There is Hilo. There is Moana Kea Forest Reserve, and there is Hawaiian Volcano National Park. And Honolulu is the capital of Hawaii. Now moving on to Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. Now it is a multinational forum for strengthening cooperation towards promoting peace, security, and stability in Asia. It was founded by Kazakhstan in 1992. The first summit was held in 2002. India is one of the founding members of CICA. Its secretariat is located in Alat Al Al Almaty, that is in Kazakhstan. Now the CICA summit is convened every four years. The CICA has 27 member countries, nine observer states, and five international organizations. Moving on to India-Africa Defence Dialogue. Now the second India-Africa Defence Dialogue was held on the sidelines of Def Expo 2022 in Gandhi Nagar. Now the first dialogue was held in Lucknow at Def Expo 2020. India's approach towards Africa is guided by the Kampala principles enunciated by Prime Minister of India in 2018. Now Gandhi Lake Gandhi Nagar declaration was adopted at the dialogue. It charted out new areas for enhancing India-Africa defence and security partnership. Moving on to IB Samar exercise. Now this is a this this was the seventh edition of IB Samar and was held at Port Jib Jibra. That is Port Elizabeth, South Africa. Now it is a joint multinational maritime exercise among Indian, Brazilian, and South African navies. So I will be for India, B for Brazil, S for S A for South Africa, and M A R stands for maritime. Moving on to I M T trilateral. It is a trilateral maritime exercise among navies of India, Mozambique, and Tanzania. The first edition of the exercise was conducted at Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Now moving on to exercise C Vigil. It is a coastal defence exercise conceptualised in 2018 to validate various measures that have been instituted towards enhancing maritime security since November 2008 terrorist attack. The exercise will be undertaken along the entire 7,516 km coastline and exclusive economic zone of India. All the coastal states and union territories, along with the maritime stakeholders, will participate. Moving on to No Money for Terror conference, the third ministerial conference on No Money for Terror, that is countering finance of terrorism. Was held in New Delhi. Now it make it aims to make progress on the discussions on combating terrorist financing held by international community in previous two conferences in Paris, that was in 2018, and in Melbourne, which was in 2019. Moving on to AD1 missile, the AD1 air defence is a long-range interceptor missile designed for both low exo-atmospheric and endo-atmospheric interceptions of long-range ballistic missiles as well as aircrafts. Now the missile is capable of striking down incoming adversary missiles and aircraft. It has been developed under the phase two of ballistic. Missile Defence Program. It is propelled by a two-stage solid motor and equipped with an indigenously developed advanced control system, navigation and guidance algorithm to precisely guide the missile to target. Moving on to Kamikaze drones, they are small unmanned aircraft that are packed with explosives that can be flown directly at a tank or another target that are destroyed when it hits the target and explodes. They are called switch blade because their blade-like wings spring out on launch. At present, Russia, China, Israel, Iran, and Turkey are expected to possess this technology. Now, moving on to Mission Def, Def Space, the Prime Minister has launched Mission Def Space at Def Expo. Its aim is to develop innovative solutions for three services, that is, Indian Air Force, Navy, and Army, in the domain of space through the Indian industry and startup. It also aims to develop a range of military applications for space warfare and to enable the private industries to offer solutions to the armed forces for future offensive and defensive requirement. Now moving on to Def Expo 2020, it was held in Gandhi Nagar, Gujarat. It was the 12th edition of Def Expo. Now Def Expo is a flagship biennial event of Ministry of Defence, showcasing the land, naval, air, and homeland security systems. Now moving on to lofted mission by NASA. Now NASA has completed the technology demonstration of its low Earth orbit flight test of an inflatable decelerator mission. Now the mission is to demonstrate a hypersonic inflatable aerodynamic decelerator or aeroshell technology that could one day help humans help. Land humans on Mars. A HIAD device will have an inflatable structure that is capable of holding its shape against drag forces. It will also have a protective, flexible thermal protection system that will protect it from heat generated during re-entry. So, moving on to next-gen launch vehicle, that is NGLV of ISRO. 
It is a cost efficient 3 stage 2 orbit reusable heavy lift vehicle with payload capability of 10 tons to geostationary transfer orbit. Now NGLV will have semi cryogenic propulsions, refined kerosene as fuel with liquid oxygen as oxidizer. For the booster stage, which is cheaper and more efficient, the use of NGLV in the area of launching communication, satellite, deep space missions, future human space flights, and cargo missions. Now, moving on to Falcon Heavy rockets, it has been developed by SpaceX. SpaceX calls it the most powerful rocket in the world. It uses 27 Merlin engines. Now, Merlin is a family of rocket engines also developed by SpaceX. Now, Falcon has liftoff capability of around 64 metric tons in low, or low Earth orbit and 27 metric tons in geostationary transfer orbit. It is 70 meters high and weighs approximately 14,000, 1420 new tons. It has been operational since 2018. Moving on to Vikram S rocket, it is India's first privately manufactured rocket developed by Skyroot Aerospace. Now, Skyroot Aerospace is a Hyderabad-based startup. It is a single-stage suborbital launch vehicle. In suborbital flights, vehicles travel slower than the orbital velocity. It means they are fast enough to reach outer space, but not fast enough to stay in orbit around the Earth. Skyroot is designing three Vikram rockets that will use various solid and cryogenic fuels to carry between 290 kilos and 560 kilograms of payloads to sun-synchronous polar orbits. Now, Vikram rockets can be assembled and launched within 24 hours from any launch site. Moving on to RISAT-2. Now, ISRO's Radar Imaging Satellite-2 satellite has made an uncontrolled re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. It was launched in 2009. It was India's first dedicated reconnaissance satellite possessing day-night as well as all-weather monitoring capability. It was also used to track hostile ships at sea that were deemed a military threat. It had a design life of 4 years, but with proper maintenance, it was able to work for 13 years. Now, moving on to Sampurnanan Telescope. It is a 104cm telescope located at Aries, that is Aryabhat Research Institute of Observational Sciences at Manora Peak, Nainital. It was established in 1972. The telescope has been extensively used for optical observations of comets, occultations by planet and asteroids, star forming regions and star clusters, variable stars, transients and active galactic nuclei among others. It has completed 50 years of pop operations. Now moving on to coronal holes. Now coronal holes are regions of sun surface where fast solar wind gushes out into space. They contain little solar material that have lower temperatures. Now they appear much darker than their surroundings. The holes are not unique phenomena appearing throughout the sun's approximately 11 year solar cycle. Now coronal holes can last between a few weeks to months. Now moving on to geomagnetic storms, a geomagnetic storm is a major disturbance of Earth's magnetosphere that occurs when there is a very efficient exchange of energy from the solar winds into the space environment surrounding Earth. They are associated with solar coronal mass ejections, where a billion tons or so of plasma from the sun with its embedded magnetic field arrives at Earth. Geomagnetic storms can cause changes in the ionosphere. Radio and GPS signals travel through this layer of atmosphere and so communication can get disrupted. Now moving on to Caudry. Cody gold nanoparticles or core AUNPs, they are derived from synthesis of extracts of cordyceps militaris and gold salts. The use of these nanoparticles in medicine could make drug delivery in human bodies faster and more accurate. Now, cordyceps militaris is a high value parasitic fungus. It is also called a super mushroom because of its tremendous medicinal properties. Now, wild cordyceps mushroom is found in eastern Himalayan belt. Moving on to glyph glyphosate, it is a herbicide. It was widely used in tea plantations. Health impact of glyphosate range from cancer, reproductive and development toxicity, neurotoxicity, immunotoxicity. Approximately 35 countries have banned or restricted the use of glyph glyphosate. In India, glyphosate has been approved for use only in tea plantations and non-plantations areas accompanying the tea crops. Now, the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare has restricted the use of glypho glyphosate. From now on, glyphosate will be applied only through pest control operators. Now, pest control operators are licensed to use deadly chemicals for treating pests such as rodents. Now, moving on to Kayasnur Kayasnur forest disease. Now, it was caused by Kayasnur forest disease virus. A member of virus family, Flavi Raide, was identified in 1957 when it was isolated from a sick monkey from Kayasnur forest in Karnataka. Since then, between 400 to 500 human cases per year have been reported. It is a deadly disease, but it severely impacts only 5 to 10 percent of the affected people. It mainly affects forest and agricultural workers. There is no specific treatment for it. Rodents, shrews, monkeys are common hosts for KFPV after being bitten by an infected tick. Now moving on to Soka Paika River. Soka Paika River. It is one of the several distributaries of Mahanadi River in Odisha. It originated from Mahanadi River near Ayatpur village in Katak. It flows 27.5 kilometers before meeting the Mahanadi again at Pankala. In 1950, the Odisha government closed 
Saku Paika River, mouth enabling the development of Tala Dund Canal System, a major canal of the state. This led the river to dry up. Now the river is said to be rejuvenated as Odisha government has started working on its revival plan. Now moving on to blue certification for Tundi and Kadmat beaches. A blue certification has been accorded to two new Indian beaches, that is Minkoi Tundi Beach and Kadmat Beach. Both the beaches are in Lakshadweep. Now the number of beaches from India certified under the blue flag certification has risen to 12. Now the blue flag certification, it can be obtained by a beach, marina or sustainable boating tourism operator and serves as an eco level. It is awarded by the Denmark based non-profit foundation of environment education. The certification is accorded based on 33 stringent criteria under four major heads, environmental education and information, bathing water quality, safety and services at the beach and environment management and conservation. There are now total 12 sites under the blue flag certification. These are Sivrajpur in Gujarat, Ghoghal in Diu, Kasar Kod and Padubiri in Padubidri in Karnataka, Kapad in Kerala, Rushikonda in Andhra Pradesh, Golden Beach of Odisha, Radhanagar in Andaman and Nicobar, Kovalam in Tamil Nadu, Eden Beach in Puducherry, Thundi and Kadmat in Lakshadweep. Now moving on to Mathura Vrindavan aims to achieve next net zero by 2041. The government of Uttar Pradesh has announced that Mathura Vrindavan is aiming to become a net zero carbon emission tourist destination by 2041. This will be the first such carbon neutral master plan for a tourist destination in India. Under the plan, tourist vehicles will be banned from entire Braj region. Only electric vehicles used as public transport will be allowed into the area. All the 252 water bodies and 24 forests in the area will be revived. Now moving on to Great Nicobar Development Project. The government has granted an in-principle clearance for diversion of 130 square kilometers of forest in Great Nicobar Island for the mega project. The mega project in Nicobra, Great Nicobar Island includes a transshipment port, an airport, a power plant, a greenfield township. The project is being implemented by Andaman and Nicobar Island Integrated Development Corporation under a vision plan conceived by Niti Aayog. A key condition for clearance of project is the submission of a detailed scheme for compensatory afforestation, which is to be done on a non-notified forest land. In Haryana, the area of the project is nearly 15% of thickly evergreen tropical forested Great Nicobar Island, which is spread over 900 square kilometers. These include the leatherback sea turtles, Nicobar megapod, which is a flightless bird endemic to Nicobar Islands, now Nicobar macaque, and saltwater crocodiles. Moving on to methane alert and response system, that is Mars. It has been launched at COP27 in Sham al Sheikh, Egypt. It is the first publicly available global system capable of transparently connecting methane detections to notification processes. It has been set up as part of UNEP International Methane Emission Observatory Strategy to get policy relevant data for emissions mitigations. It will be used from global mapping satellites to identify very large methane plumes and methane hotspots. It will attribute the emissions to a specific source. A UNEP will then notify governments and companies about the emission. Now moving on, methane as a greenhouse gas. Now methane is the second most common and six among the six major greenhouse gases. It accounts for 17% of the current global greenhouse gas emissions. Its global warming potential is about 80 times that of carbon dioxide. It also has been blamed for having caused at least 25 to 30 percent of the temperature rise since pre-industrial times. However, methane has freer sources of emissions compared to CO2. Now, moving on to Secure Himalaya project, it is part of the Global Partnership on Himalayan Conservation and Crime Partnership for Sustainable Development, that is the Global Wildlife Program, funded by Global by Environment Facility. It is being implemented by the Ministry of Environment along with UNDP. It is aimed at conservation of snow leopards and its habitat. It also addresses key issues of habitat degradation threatened livelihoods and illegal trade in wildlife. Now moving on to World Green City Award of 2022. Hyderabad has won the overall World Green City Award 2022 for Living Green for Economic Recovery and Inclusive Growth Award. The Green City Award was instituted by International Award Association of Horticulture Producers. The award recognizes the role of city authorities in promoting and supporting greater inclusion of nature and plants in urban environments. Hyderabad was award awarded for its large-scale tree plantation program known as Tilanga Tilangna Ku Harita Haram. The program aims to increase the tree cover of the state by 33%. Now moving on to LEED IT Summit. India and Sweden hosted the LEED IT Summit on the sidelines of COP27. Leadership Group for Industry Transition, that is LEED IT, Leadership Group for Industry Transition, was launched by Sweden and India at the UN Climate Action Summit in September 2019 and is supported by the World Economic Forum. 
Now, lead IT members subscribe to the notion that energy-intensive industries can and must progress on low-carbon pathways, aiming to achieve net zero carbon emissions. It is hosted by Stockholm Environment Institute, Sweden. Moving on to In Our Lifetime campaign, the National Museum of Natural History under the Ministry of Environment, Government of India and UNDP has launched the In Our Lifetime campaign on the sidelines of COP27. Its aim is to encourage youth between the age of 18 and 23 years to become message bearers of sustainable lifestyle. It encourages youth to submit their climate action that contribute to lifestyles for the environment within their capacities. These practices should be sustainable and scalable. Moving on to Global Offshore, offshore Wind Alliance, nine countries including Britain, Germany, USA and Japan have joined the Global Offshore Wind Alliance. It has been set up by the International Renewable Energy Agency, that is INENA, Denmark and the World Global Wind Energy Council. Now, the alliance brings together governments, private sector, international organizations and other stakeholders to accelerate the development deployment of offshore wind power. Its target is to achieve total global offshore wind capacity of a minimum 380 gigawatts by 2030. Now, moving on to Infrastructure Resilience Accelerator Fund, that is IRAF, the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure has announced the launch of IRAF at COP27. Now, IRAF is a multi-donor trust fund launched by CDRI with support of UNDP and United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction. Its purpose is to support global action on disaster resilience of infrastructure systems, especially in developing countries and small island developing states, that is SEDS. It is supported by Government of India, United Kingdoms, Australia and the European Union. Now moving on to PM2.5 and anemia. Now according to a study, long-term exposure to PM2.5 pollutants may increase the prevalence of anemia among women of reproductive age through systemic inflammation. For every 10 microgram per cubic meter of air increased in ambient PM2.5 exposure, the average anemia prevalence among women increases by 7.23%. Among PM2.5 sources, sulfate and black carbon are more associated with anemia than organics and dust. The study says that anemia prevalence will fall from 53% to 39.5% if India meets its recent clean air targets. Now moving on to National Bioenergy Program, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy of the National Bioenergy Program till 2025-26. It aims to aid the use of huge sulfur, sulfurous biomass, cattle dunks, industrial and urban bio waste available in the country for energy recovery. It has three sub-schemes that is waste to energy program, biomass program and biogas program. Now waste to energy programs support the setting up of large biogas, bio CNG and power plants excluding MSW that is municipal solid waste to power projects. The biomass programs support setting up of pellet and briquettes for use in power generation and non bagasse waste power generating pro generation projects. Now, biogas program supports the setting of family and medium-sized biogas in rural areas. Now, moving on to Harit Aikar initiative, the Income Tax Department has launched the Harit Aikar, that is Haryali Achievement Resolution by Income Tax Initiative. Under this initiative, the Income Tax Department resolves to increase the green cover by planting trees and creating micro forests in and around the IT department's building and other public areas. Now, moving on to Kaveri South Wildlife Sanctuary. The government of Tamil Nadu has notified the Kaveri South Wildlife Sanctuary as the state's 17th wildlife sanctuary. It will connect Kaveri North Wildlife Sanctuary of Tamil Nadu with Kaveri Wildlife Sanctuary in Karnataka. Now, two elephant corridors, the Nandi Mangalam Uli Banda corridor and Kovai Pallam Ani Bithalla corridors fall in this area. The sanctuary is home to 35 species of mammals and 238 species of birds. Late soft cell turtles, smooth coated otters, marsh crocodiles, and four horned antelopes are some of the species found here. Now, moving on to Sena spectabilis, it is an invasive tree species that has taken over between 800 to 1200 hectares of buffer zone of Muddu Malai Tiger Reserve. It was introduced in India as an ornamental species and for use as firewood from South and Central America. The plant has become an invasive alien species in parts of Africa, India, and other countries. It arrests the growth of other indigenous trees and grass species. It also adversely affects the germination and growth of native species. Now moving on to Thoku Imong bird count, it is Nagaland's first bird documentation event to celebrate the birds of the state. This exercise aims to go beyond the documentation of Amur falcons. It is being organized by Voka Forest Division, Nagaland, Forest Management Project and Bird Count India. Now the event has been timed with the post-harvest Thoku Imong festival of Lotha Nagas to spread awareness about the state's avian diversity. Now the event falls within the Salim Ali bio Bird Count, a nationwide event conducted by Bombay Natural History Society. Now moving on to Indian Skimmer. Indian Skimmer or Indian Scissor Bills belong to the Skimmer genus 
rhinochops in the family Laridae. Its UN IUCN status is endangered. It is found in the coastal estuaries of western and eastern Indias. About 20% of the total population of Indian skimmers nest along the river Chambal. Now villagers here call it Panchera, that which tears water. It is threatened by the degradation of wetlands and riverine ha habitats. In 2020, the Bombay Natural History Society initiated a guardian of the skimmer program, which is a community-based conservation initiative. Recently, Indian skimmers were seen in huge flocks during winters in Koringa Wildlife Sanctuary, Kanin Kaki Nada. Now moving on to Panarma Hironri, it is the largest breeding ground of different species of heron in Malabar region. Now it was formed on the sandbanks of Panamara River. It is covered with vegetations, primarily bamboo, bamboo grooves. Now Panamara River is a tributary of Kabani River along with Manthawadi, Babali, Nolupuza and Nugu rivers. Now the Great Indian Bustard, it is one of the heaviest flying birds weighing up to 15 kilograms. It inhibits dry grasslands and scrublands on the Indian subcontinent. It is the state bird of Rajasthan. Its population is about 150 in Rajasthan, which accounts for 95% of its total world population. It is a critically endangered species with less than 150 birds left in the wild. It is classified under Appendix 1 of Sites and Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. The recent sighting of three great Indian bustards in Pakistan's Cholistan Desert has given, given rise to the speculation that GIB might have flown across the international borders from India's Desert National Park. Now moving on to Indian bison, Sri Lanka has asked India to translocate six Indian bisons, that is gores, to reintroduce them in the island from where they become extinct by the end of 17th century. Now Indian gore or bison is the largest species among the wild cattle and the boviates. There are about 13,000 to 30,000 gods in the world with 85% of the population present in India. It is also found in Burma and Thailand. They are mostly found in the hilly parts of Western Ghats region such as Bandipur, Bainard and Muddumalai. Gaur is the state animal of Goa and Bihar. Now the IUCN status is vulnerable and it falls under the Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Moving on to Himalayan Grey Langur. Now Himalayan Grey Langur or Chamba Secret Langur is a Kaluboyin meaning leaf-eating monkey. It was once considered a subspecies of Cementopithus enthilus, commonly known as Bengal sacred langur or Hanuman langur. But it was separated as a species in 2005. It is considered an endangered species globally with population less than 1500 mature individuals. They inhibit areas between 2200 and 4000 meters above the mean sea level in subtropical, tropical moist temperate, alpine coniferous and broadleaf forest and scrublands. In the Indian subcontinent, their distribution is reported from Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir and from Pakistan and Nepal. Now moving on to exotic animals, the police in southern Assam have seized seven exotic primates. Now exotic live species are animals or plant species moved from their original range location to a new one. According to the Government of India advisory, the phrase exotic live species include animals named under appendixes 1, 2 and 3 of sites and does not include species from Schedules of Wildlife Protection Act. Now moving on to anthropomorphic sites and megaliths. Now anthropomorphic sites are those marked by a representation of human form above the megalith burials. Now, Tirupati district in Andhra Pradesh is said to have the largest collection of anthropomorphic burial sites. Most of these sites are in the state of neglect. Megalithic culture is a large prehistoric stone culture that lasted from Neolithic Stone Age to the early historical period across the world. Now, a megalith is a sta large stone that has been used to construct prehistoric structure or monument. Types of megalith include dolmen, crane, cyst, menhir, and stone circles, etc. Now moving on to Khangudi, Khangudi Cave. It is a natural limestone cave about 15 kilometers from Khurul, Manipur. Now, excavations carried out by Manipur's archaeologists have revealed the cave was home to Stone Age communities. The cave was also used as shelter by local people during World War II after the Japanese forces advanced to Manipur and the adjoining Nagaland. According to a study by researchers, a colony of bats were evicted from the caves to make it tourist friendly. Now moving on to Raksh. Rashkhan and Taj Bibi. The tourism department of Uttar Pradesh has redeveloped the tombs of Rashkhan and Taj Bibi as a tourist complex. Now, Rashkhan, that is Sayyid Ibrahim Khan, was a 16th century Sufi Muslim poet born either in Amroha or Hardoi in Uttar Pradesh. He became a follower of Lord Krishna and spent his life in Vrindavan. His poetry is in the form of Dua, Pad Padavali, and Savyay. Now, Taj Bibi, also known as the Mughal Mirabai, was the daughter of a Muslim nobleman named Padna Khan. Now, Taj Bibi was married to Emperor Akbar. 
and was appointed by Mughals to protect the Gokul area. She wrote poetry during Mughal time when the ruling class belonged to the Muslim religion. Now moving on to Bhut Kola, it is an annual folk ritual of Tullu speaking people in Dakshin Kannada, Uttar Kannada and Udupi in Karnataka where local spirits or deities are worshipped. It is performed by a trained person who is believed to have temporarily become a god himself. The performer displays an aggressive outlook, dances fiercely, performs multiple rituals, drums and music give company to the dancing and puja rituals. Panjruli, Bobarya, Piliputa, Kalakudda, Kalaburti, Pili Chamundi, Koti Chinnaya are some of the popular Bhutas worship as part of Bhut Kola. It is said to have some influence on Yakshagana from Yakshagana. Nunad Prabhu came to Igoda. He was a 16th century chieftain of Vijayanagar Empire. He belonged to Vokailika community in Karnataka. He is credited as the founder of Bengaluru city. He is known to have developed around 1000 lakes in the city to cater to drinking and agricultural needs. Now, the Prime Minister has unveiled a 108 feet long bronze statue of Nadh Prabhu Kempe Gauda in Bengaluru. The statue, has, the statue has been named as Statue of Prosperity. Now moving on to Baipur Uru. Now Baipur is an ancient port town located in the banks of Chaliyar River in Kerala. And Uru is a wooden dhow that is shipped made from Malabar Teak in Baipur. It is probably the biggest handicraft in the world. Uru making in Baipur is centuries old tradition that was established since India became, began its maritime trade with Mesopotamia. Now Baipur Urus are made of wood without using any modern techniques. Now, Kalasis is the traditional artisans responsible for manufacturing of Uru. Now, moving on to Shabd Shala initiative. It is a website in, invite, to invite suggestions for translation of words that are recent additions to English language and are widely used in India. People can provide translations in any language and not limited to eight schedule like Bhojpuri and Nagamisi. Selfie, drones, metaverse and artificial intelligence are common are among the new technical English words that became part of common usage but have no formal translations into Indian languages. Moving on to commissions for scientific and technical terminologies, it was established in 1961 by Government of India under Article 344 Clause 4 of Indian Constitution. Its mandate is to evolve technical terminologies in all Indian languages, propagate its use and distribute it widely. It functions under the Department of Higher Education, under the Ministry of Education. Moving on to Mangar Massacre on November 17, 1913, British killed more than 1500 tribals in Mangar, that is Banswada, Rajasthan. It is called as Adivasi Jaliawala. Govind Guru, a tribal bhil leader, had mobilized the bhil against the atrocities of British, including bonded labor. On this day, the British fired indiscriminately at Bheel protesters. Now, Pasumpon Thewar, now Pasumpon Muthurul Malinga Thewar was born on 30th of October 1908 in Pasumpon in the Ramanathampuram district of Tamil Nadu. He was a freedom fighter come spiritual leader and was seen as a deity among Mukuluthor community. Thewar became a full-time member of the Congress party and attended the 1927 Congress session at Madras as a volunteer when he was just 19. He became a close eye of Netaji Shubhash Chandra Bose. In 1939, he assisted activities, activist A. Vidyanath a year to take Dalits to Minakshi Temple in Madurai. He was instrumental in getting the Criminal Tribes Act repealed in 1946. Now moving on to Janki Amal. The 125th birth anniversary of Janki Amal was observed on November 4th, 2022. She was born in 1897. She was the first Indian woman to be awarded a PhD in Botanical Sciences. She is known widely for her contribution in the food field of genetics, cytology, evolution and more. Her work played a significant role in creating sugarcane hybrids that yielded sweeter sugar. She served as head of the Central Botanical Laboratory in Allahabad. She was also associated with Save the Silent Valley movement. Now moving on to addition to the scheduled tribe lists. The National Commission for Scheduled Tribes has approved the inclusion of Pahari, which is an ethnic group in the scheduled tribe list of the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir. Now NCST has also called for the inclusion of Padhari, Koli and Gadda Brahman communities to be included in the ST list of Jammu and Kashmir. Now moving on to Nihonshu, that is Japanese Saki. The embassy of Japan in New Delhi has filled an application seeking a GI tag for Nihonshu, that is Japanese Saki, an alcoholic beverage. This is the first time a product from Japan has filed for a tag at the geographical indication register in India. Now, Nihonshu is an alcoholic beverage. People drink it on daily basis as well as on special occasions. It consists of three main ingredients that is rice, koji kin that is a type of fungal spore and water. 
Now moving on to Niveshak Didi. India Post Payments Bank has conducted India's first floating financial literacy camp with an initiative called Niveshak Didi. It has been launched in collaboration with Investor Education and Protection Fund Authority under the aegis of Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Its aim is to promote financial literacy through by the women for the women concept. The initiative has adopted its ideology from women in rural areas feel more comfortable to share their queries with the female itself. Now moving on to Visa program. The Women Initiate Involvement in Science and Engineering Research Program was launched in 2021 by the Indo-German Science and Technology Center. It is a program to promote women in field of research and development through lateral entry. The program will support women scientists holding regular long-term research positions in academia or research institutes industry. IGSTC supports the bodies with a maximum amounting to 39 lakh rupees from Indian side and 48,000 euros from the German side. The Visa program offers 20 awards per year. Now moving on to IBAC culture cluster under the urban mission. IBAC cluster in the Aizwal district of Mizoram has become the first cluster to be completely under the Shama Prasad Mukherjee urban mission. Now the urban mission was launched in 2016 by the Ministry of Rural Development. Its objective is to stimulate local economic development, enhance basic services and create well-planned urban clusters. Its target is to develop 300 clusters in the country. Now moving on to Raitu Bharosa Kendras. The Raitu Bharosa Kendras are unique seed to sales single window service centers for farmers that have been set up across Andhra Pradesh. They are a one-stop solution for farmers need and grievances. All the RBKs, farmers can get quality seeds, fertilizers, hire farm equipments, sell their produce, soil testing and advisory on crops, fertilizer use, etc. Now farmers are also paid crop insurance through RBKs. Now, Indian Biological Data Centers. The Union Ministry of Science and Technology has inaugurated the Indian Biological Data Center at Faridabad, Haryana. It is the first national repository of life science data in India. Its purpose is to achieve all life science data generated by publicly funded research in India. The data center is supported by Department of Biotechnology. IBDC has its data storage capacity of about 4 petabytes and houses the Brahm High Performance Computing Facility. Now, moving on to narrative terrorism. It is a part of criminal conspiracy to spread terrorism by creating false narrative. These narratives can be seditious write-up intended to create unrest and abet the gullible youth to take the path of violence. These narratives can support the claim of cessation of a part of the country's territory, challenge the sovereignty and territorial integrity, glorify violence and advocate and abet the commission of terrorist acts. They can be booked under the provisions of Indian Penal Code and Unlawful Activities Prevention Act. Now moving on to Battle of Walong. Now, Walong is one of the India's easternmost villages in Arunachal Pradesh. In the 1962 India-China War, the Indian Army defended against China in all sectors except one, which was Walong. Now, the Battle of Walong was the only counter-attack India could manage in the war. The Indian Army held, the back, held back the Chinese troops for 27 days, which forced the Chinese troops to deploy its river, reserve division from Thwang to Walong. Now, the places in Indian sectors relevant with China are Daud Beg Oldi, Pyongyang So, Barahuti in Uttarakhand, Nathula and Chumbi Valley in Sikkim, Tuang in Arunachal Pradesh, Kameng in Arunachal Pradesh, Geling in Arunachal Pradesh, Kibitu in Arunachal Pradesh and Banglong in Arunachal Pradesh itself.